typically, at least in my experience, people don't come to Calvinism just by reading the Bible. So why am I still a Calvinist? Besides the Spirit keeping me, there is a consistent testimony of the church that we see the church consistently in light of scripture bringing forth a, that consistent testimony in terms of bringing out those truths that are found in scripture as it relates to calvinism and it holding up through the test of time and then of course there's the consistent testimony of scripture you have the express passages that talk about calvinistic principles and those should be used to interpret the less clear passages. And the nature of the Reformation cry of sola scriptura allows us to utilize those as authorities in some sense outside of scripture. We can use them as summaries of faith. So scripture is not our only authority in faith and practice. It is our final authority in faith and practice. And not that those confessions are authorities in and of themselves. The authority that they are teaching is merely just scripture. So even though they are not infallible like scripture is, they are able to communicate consistently truths of scripture and they can be helpful guides as we're looking to see what scripture teaches about these things. And I think that we can see consistency in those documents and they're overall consistent. The 1677 London Baptist, the Savoy Declaration, the Westminster, I think are great summaries of faith. Though there's a treasure trove of material that we have to be able to pull from to show that consistent testimony of a Calvinistic reform perspective. And so God uses those things to help strengthen the faith of his people and for me personally helps me to be able to remain a Calvinist and continue to believe those things scripture teaches. Now, I think the most important aspect of this discussion as it relates to why I'm a Calvinist is having a robust classical doctrine of God. And I think this is a topic that is neglected when talking about Calvinism in terms of free will versus libertarian free will, I should say, versus an understanding of man's free will in a limited sense as it relates to the sovereignty of God. Knowing that God is the first cause of all things, as Romans 11, 36 teaches, means that he ordained every event, including the salvation of his people. Since in a human understanding, God's act to create flows from his decree. God knows all things because he created all things. All things come from him. And so those things that God wants to create in an act, he decrees. And this also means that he is completely sovereign since any real limitation in God implies that he is not the first cause of all things. Because the first cause is immutable, infinite, simple, etc. So he cannot submit to anything outside of himself because of the nature of how scripture reveals him as the first cause and creator of all things. And so this means he is sovereign. This means he does predestine all things. And because of that, we have a Calvinistic framework from that. So those passages in Ephesians 1 that talk about God predestining his people. That is an understanding that God is sovereign above all things because of who he is by nature. In fact, it was seen as blasphemous in the 17th century to say that man had libertarian free will because that would make him have power that only God has. Man would have the ability to enact things into existence that only God can do. So man cannot have autonomous free will. This puts man the same level as God and it is blasphemous to do so. So that was rejected and that was a, a very strong argument uh, that like John Owen used against Arminian understandings of man's will. And also grounding my understanding of my status as creature in a robust doctrine of God keeps me from falling in to the blasphemy that we find Leighton Flowers teaching on man's will. And I think that there are within the so-called Calvinist circles who don't see the dangers of autonomous free will in relation to a classical understanding of God. And I think it hinders the discussion because the discussion turns to arguments that really are not getting to the root of the issue. But having a, a classical biblical understanding of God, I think, can help address a lot of those arguments that come our way from the other side. And so... One thing that keeps me a Calvinist, understanding who God is, biblically speaking. And that can help eliminate a lot of those arguments that come against the Calvinist 
reformed position on salvation, God's sovereignty, and man's freedom. So I hope that's helpful and it, I think, demonstrates why I see myself as a Calvinist. And I don't answer the question of what made me a Calvinist, because from my perspective and my experience, I've grown up in reform circles for most of my life, and I don't remember a time where I wasn't in reform circles. But God has continued. God saved me. He grew me in these things, looking through church history, looking at our tradition, looking at scripture, and continues to strengthen my faith and keeps me within that theological stream. Now, you may have a testimony of somebody who has. Congratulations.